Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 3 Biology Area of Study 1. Today we're going to be looking at gene structure and regulation. So in terms of looking at gene structure and regulation, the dot points that we are going to be focusing on today is the functional distinction between structural genes and regulatory genes, um, the structure of genes in eukaryotic cells, so understanding what the stop and start instructions are, what the promoter regions are, and what exons and introns are. And we're going to be using the example of the LAC operon as a prokaryotic model um, that can illustrate the switching of um, genes, switching them on and off um, that are expressed by regulatory genes. All right, so let's make a start. Looking at first off structural and regulatory genes. So a gene, all right, we know is a segment of DNA. And a typical gene is going to consist of lots and lots of nucleotides, okay? Lots and lots of ATCGs, all made up together to form a code. Some genes are going to code for the production of a particular protein, okay, and undergo transcription and translation, whereas other genes are going to control the actions of other genes, all right? And so in terms of that, that's where structural versus regulatory genes comes into play. So... A structural gene is a gene that produces proteins that become a part of the structure of or functioning of an organism or of a cell, all right, um, compared to a regulatory gene, which is a gene that produces proteins that's going to control the action of other genes. So they are what we call on and off switches, and they can determine the rate at which products are made, okay? So they are basically stopping or starting transcription from occurring. So they act in two ways, all right? The first way is that there are DNA binding proteins and they bind directly to particular DNA segments near a particular gene and they can switch them on or off. Or we have what we call signaling proteins, okay? And what they do is they bind to particular receptors that are on the membrane of the cell and they are able to trigger a series of events, okay, intracellularly, so inside the cell, to switch particular genes on and off. So... Some examples are homeotic genes, um, which control embryonic development. Alrighty, moving on to the next part. So we have got the structure of genes. Now we need to know that a gene, as I said before, is made up of DNA and it's grouped into um, exons and introns. So your exons are your coding regions and they're the regions that are going to undergo translation, whereas introns are located in between exons, okay? And they are not going to be expressed in the final protein sequence. So remember in transcription, on um, um, transcription post-modification, um, those introns are spliced. So they remain in the nucleus, whereas that mature mRNA is going to go and get translated. So those introns are not going to be expressed in the final protein sequence. Um, in terms of looking at our structure, what is important is we have a promoter, okay, and that promoter is at the five prime end of our sequence, um, and it basically allows transcription factors to come and initiate the transcription of a particular. So what's happening there is the RNA polymerase is going to connect, and that's where, again, transcription is going to begin. At the three prime end, which is on the other side, okay, down on this end, we have what we call a translation stop codon, and that's going to mark the end um, or the transcription termination site. Alrighty, um, moving on to the next bit. All right, another vocab word that you may come across in this unit is also called an open reading frame. So an open reading frame of a gene is basically the main parts that have the coded instructions, okay? So in that sense, we're talking about the introns and exons. But remember, the exons are the only ones that are going to be um, undergoing translation. Um, you might also have come across some terminology in terms of looking at the five prime untranslated region and the three prime untranslated region. Basically, the five prime end is um, where there's going to be the entry into the ribosome, whereas the three prime end is going to be for the termination of translation. Okay, and they are situated at either end of that open reading frame. So five prime end and three prime end. 
Okay, so the next major part of this stop point for this um, part of the study design is understanding the LAC operon. So before we talk about the LAC operon, I just want to talk about operons in general. So the word operon means to operate. Okay, so it's basically a unit that's made up of various genes, okay, and they are linked together, so they have similar functions, which are thought to regulate other genes that are responsible for the synthesis of a protein. So they're mostly found in prokaryotic cells, and they're made up of the following parts. So an operon is made up of a promoter, a repressor, an operator, and a gene. So a promoter, like I said before, is the region where RNA polymerase is going to grab on to the DNA and begin transcription. A repressor, okay, in terms of the lac operon, is when lactose is binding to the uh, repressor and the shape of the repressor is going to be changed. So the thing that we're breaking down, which in terms of the lac operon is lactose, all right, is going to bind with the repressor. The shape of the repressor is changed, which means in the lac operon, the RNA polymerase can now continue down the DNA and continue transcription. In terms of the action of repressors and activators, Repressors basically bind to what we call silencers. So if a repressor binds to a silencer, it's going to decrease the rate of transcription. But if an activator binds to an enhancer, that's going to increase the rate of transcription. Okay. Um, in terms of the LAC operon, sorry, we're going to continue. Your operator is your on and off switch and your gene is... Um, basically the DNA sequences that are coding particular things um, and bacteria have a number of different genes that are all located near each other. Okay, in terms of the LAC operon, the LAC operon is an operon that is found within bacteria, an example of which is E. coli, and it enables the breakdown, all right, the metabolism of lactose. So it consists of three structural genes, LACZ, LACY, and lac A, um, and still has a promoter, all right, where the RNA polymerase, like I said, is going to attach to start the process of transcription of those three genes. We have an operator, which is a short DNA segment that's going to provide a binding site for the repressor, and we've got the lac I gene. Okay, so the lac I gene is a regulator gene that's going to control the operon by coding for a particular repressor. So this is a protein that when it's activated, it's going to downregulate the gene expression and prevent gene transcription. So we are turning genes on and off, all right, the transcription of genes on and off by controlling whether the lactose is binding with the repressor or not, if the repressor is there or if it's not. So in terms of looking at the structure of the lac operon, I want you to understand that we've got our promoter, okay? We've got regulatory genes that are going to code for a repressor, okay, that's going to attach over here. We've then got our structural genes, okay, and these genes in the lac operon are for the breakdown of lactose. Um, and they are all going to act together for gene expression or transcription of these three genes. Now, this video, I'm going to link it in the description, is also an amazing resource that explains really well the function of the LAC operon and how the different um, lactose molecules, when they're coming, how they're acting upon um, the LAC operon and how the LAC operon is working to allow the metabolism of lactose. If you have any questions in regards to any of these dot points that we've gone through today, please leave a comment below and I'm happy to um, further explain or answer any questions. But otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.